Well, good morning. I hope you're having a good beginning of this day once again. Here we are <clears throat> in a holy week, you know, uh, celebrating uh, the life, the death, the resurrection, you know, of Jesus Christ. And uh, I just pray that, you know, there's an opportunity that God's going to give you to kind of press into him, maybe a little bit deeper, you know, this week, uh, in addition, that you would have opportunities galore, you know, to be able to, you know, uh, invite, you know, those who are not yet connected to him. And remember, uh, um, like something that's new, it's still something I always have to kind of remember and get my mind around, you know, is to actually um, uh, know that I can invite anybody anywhere in the world. So uh, just want to encourage you, you know, with that, you know, on this day. And so with that being said, uh, we are jumping into 1 John. So not John, but we're jumping into 1 John. We're going to go through that. We're going to go through, you know, um, 2 John, 3 John, you know, um, even through this next week, you know, that we might, you know, continue to grow in him as we understand. Now, uh, I think most of you understand. We understand here, um, but I don't know if we understand sometimes here as it relates to the importance of stuff versus people, right? We, we know, you know, how uh, less important things are versus how much more important people are. Uh, and God desires to be in deep relationship with us, and he wants us to be in deep relationship with one another. And the great part is that John, 1 John especially, begins to open that up. So we're gonna be able to open up uh, the understanding of what John is trying to teach us and tell us about the importance you know, of relationship. Uh, the word uh, that we have in our English you know, for relationship um, uh, might be uh, fellowship, you know, but fellowship, you know, is a Greek word. It's, it's pronounced koinonia. Uh, and the idea of it, you know, is that um, it's an idea of, let me just say specifically, a sharing of communion, a common bond and common life. It speaks of a living, breathing, sharing, loving relationship with one another. That's what it, that's what it talks about. Um, in fact, those who have fellowship with one another, you know, are those who share the same resources and are bond by the same responsibilities, you know. Uh, and so with that in mind, I want you to see how John tells us that we can have fellowship. So with that is that we proclaim to you, verse 1, 1 John 1, verse 1, we proclaim to you that the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen, we saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. Now he's talking about Jesus. And the reason it's important that for him to say, I've seen him with my eyes, touched him. He is a physical person. He actually lived. Because uh, in that day especially, there was something known as a Gnosticism. Gnosticism, you know, thought that Jesus, you know, uh, was God. Even though he was God, he was not actually a physical man. Because they understood that um, uh, the, the physical nature was evil. The physical nature was sinful. So there's no way a perfect God could live in a an, an sinful man. And yet that's just not the case. And so he's trying to say, no, no, no. Your understanding, your theology is not correct. This person really existed. He wasn't a spirit. He wasn't something like that. He didn't become a God, you know, um, after he went to the cross and rose from the dead. You know, that's not who he was. He was God in human form, fully God and fully man. And that's what he's telling there. Verse two, this one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him. Now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the father and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you that we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you might have, don't miss this, fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the father and with the son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. So he's saying, and this is, sets the whole tone for the thing, that you and I can not only have fellowship with one another, but we can also have fellowship with God. Let me remind you, fellowship makes, speaks of sharing, a communion, a common bond, common life. The Greek word for it is koinonia. You know, this, uh, uh, it's, it's almost overwhelming when you think about that being applied to us in our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You know, that we too can have this crazy connection, you know, with God, this sharing, this knowing, this bonding, this uh, commonality that we can have with the God of the universe is what John is proclaiming because of who Jesus was and what he has done based on what we're celebrating this week. 
That's what's exciting. Now, for many people, um, let's be honest, that idea, uh, I know us preaching you know, on, um, on Sundays and that kind of stuff can be incredibly unappealing. It's not encouraging. It's not something that we get excited about in terms of I can have deep relationship with God. It's because of the view that we have of God, right? Uh, it almost be like uh, me saying, guess what? You know, boys and girls, you can have a deep relationship with the vice principal. You know, the one who punishes you. Would you like to have a relationship with the vice principal? They're like, no, I do not want a relationship with the vice principal. Because the vice principal's job, especially growing up in old school, I know it's not the case, I don't need emails now today, you know, was you were the disciplinarian. You were the one, you know, who brought forth judgment, you know, uh, and discipline in the lives of the students, you know, who got into trouble. And so the idea of wanting to connect to a God of judgment, a God of discipline, doesn't feel very good. Yet, if we have a right view of God, one who is great, good, you know, graceful. Yes, he does discipline, but out of love. If we understand the goodness of God, the, the power of God, the connection, you know, and uh, of connecting to the God of the universe, you know, what I can do in our lives, all of a sudden our view of God changes our desire to have relationship with God. And we know that to be true of all relationships, right? The view that you have of, of your dad dictates your relationship with your dad. You know, um, and, 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 and it's the same thing with God. And so my hope is that we would help people, you yourself as well, understand a right theology, right understanding of who God is so that when John says that we can have fellowship with him, uh, that it actually becomes an encouraging thing. Now, I know also conversely that other people don't want this idea of relationship with God because they feel so distant from him. You know, it's uh, the shame. It's the, I'm not worthy, I'm disqualified uh, because of what I've said or what I've done. And if we know that God is the one who is the one who's authored the, 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 the sending of Jesus Christ so that we can have fellowship, um, he, this, is his, this is a peace offering, this is a grace offering, you know, that he's given to us in how much he loves us, that he would uh, a desire that we would be in relationship and fellowship with him common bond, common mission, common sharing, you know, of different things in life that we have that kind of deep relationship. That's how John opens his letter, that you and I, because of what Jesus has done, can have this deep abiding relationship, like we talked about, remaining in Jesus. And then he says, and we can have fellowship with one another, the same kind of fellowship. That's the kind of depth of relationship that God wants us to have. Because in our minds, we know that people are more important than things, than titles, than successes. But oftentimes we elevate those things because let's be honest, relationship is hard. But yet when we have fellowship with God and fellowship with one another, it sure makes life just a lot easier and better to live because we have these close relationships. And so this is the message, verse five, that we have heard from Jesus and now declare to you. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say that we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness, we are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then notice this, then we can have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So he he understands that we're gonna still struggle with sin. The key is not to live in the darkness. See, living, not popping in and out, which is what we often do, living in the darkness and yet exposing that to light. And, as the, and, the, and by, by exposing it to light, we are living in the light, which allows us to have relationship with one another and cleanses us from all sin. I love that. If we claim we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim to not sin, then we are calling God a liar and showing that his word knows no place in our hearts. So he's continually, we have this sin, we need to confess. Now God forgives the sin. This isn't about forgiveness, you notice that. What he's talking about is the cleansing takes place on the cross, but we need a regular, you know, um, almost like a regular shower, a regular bath, you know, in connection with him. That's part of the confession that does, and it helps us to understand our place before God. But anyway, as we close, I just wanna encourage you once again, have fellowship with God. Understand who God really is so that you can 
want to have fellowship, desire to have fellowship, and understand what fellowship means. It's this bonding, it's this um, uh, connection, it's this uh, deep relationship you know, that allows us to experience the power, the presence, and the purpose of God. We get to unite together that he offers us because of Jesus Christ. And we offer this as we do this together with him at the center. That's the goal, that's the hope, that's the excitement of what God provides to us as we celebrate this week. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for um, just uh, your servant, John, um, the one whom Jesus loved, uh, that uh, he writes about. I pray that you would just lead and guide us, that you would help us to have fellowship with you, to have a right understanding of who you are so that we can also have great relationships with other people. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your connection. Thank you for the opportunity that we have um, to have you at the center. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey guys, have a great day today. And uh, once again, uh, be praying about who you're gonna invite, share you know, on social media, all that kind of stuff as we continue to go forward today with what he's calling us to be and do. Love you guys, have a great day.